Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to continue the series on the Queen's Indian defense with the old main line or bishop to b7 on move 4, so the position you see on the board now. And unlike uh, the previous video in the series bishop a6, which became the modern main line, bishop b7 uh, is much easier to understand. It will rely on plans and patterns uh, like most Queen's Indian positions and it's extremely useful because once you get to know this position you will have a weapon you can apply against the English opening, against the Retti, against d4 openings, uh, even against some e4 setups and b3 setups you are able to play a Queen's Indian type of position. So learning this is very useful. Okay, so we reach this position from d4, knight of 6, c4, e6, uh, knight to f3, b6, and now g3, the main move uh, for white and bishop to b7, and this is going to be our starting position. Before I move on, I would just like to mention something. I had a question, like why is e6 played on move 2 instead of b6? Doesn't b6 avoid the Catalan? Yes, it does. Because most uh, Queen's Indian players would just love white to play knight to f3. The problem is if they play knight c3, you are sort of forced to play the Nimtso. And if they play g3, well, then you are forced to play the Catalan. With the move b6 on move 2, you do avoid the Catalan. g3 now, of course, wouldn't make any sense because you would play bishop to b7. However, there is a problem with this. If you play b6 on move 2, white is able to go for the very annoying f3. And once you continue with the sensible bishop b7, he plays e4. The same goes if you play bishop a6. And this bishop is useful because it prevents e4 and you're fighting for the, light, for the light squares. And if you allow this, then fine, this is playable. This has been played by strong players, but you're not playing a Queen's Indian. So bear in mind that e6 on move 2 is just a more sensible position. Okay, uh, there is a lot to be said about this position uh, after bishop to g2. Uh, I've already given you a brief intro in the first video in the series. You can watch that if you are unfamiliar with the basics of the Queen's Indian. And yesterday when we were looking at the main line, I went over some uh, basic pawn structures. I'm going to go over them again and I'm going to add two more because I think it's very important to understand plans and, idea and ideas in this opening. So if you look at the first starting position of the Queen's Indian, the first starting pawn structure, there are a couple of things you have to know. Firstly, uh, the most awkward piece for black is going to be the b8 knight. Every piece that controls the light, light squares is going to be a good piece, meaning the f6 knight and the b7 bishop. You're controlling the light square diagonal, especially the squares e4 and d5. What you are trying to prevent is white playing e4. If white succeeds, you will have failed your, your opening strategy. Okay, there are a couple of ways to play this. You can play for c5, which is a very good way to undermine the center. The problem is that most often white will react with the move d5 and you will get a position similar to this, which we are going to be discussing a bit later on. I actually don't have to switch the board. This is the position I wanted to talk about. This is very common uh, after bishop to b7. Uh, this position where you have a sort of Benoni weakness on d6, where you have to be careful about white's pieces coming to c4 and e4, especially knights, which isn't unlikely, and then d6 is a huge weakness. However, you can play this position um, in, in the following way. So usually your bishop is on e7 in the Queen's Indian. What you can do is play g6, bishop f6, and bishop g7, and you basically switch to dark squared control. And I know this is hard to understand, but in most Queen's Indian positions, eventually, you will have to play on the dark squares as well, even if the opening revolves around light squares. Furthermore, you can play knight to d7, control the e5 square, queen e7, fight for the semi-open e-file, put your rook on e8, and put pressure on the, black, on the white position. So this is not a bad position. One thing I would uh, want you to take note of is don't weaken the c4 square. Don't move your pawn to b4. If you if you leave the c4 square unattended, if you don't leave yourself the option of playing b5, then defending d6 will be very, very hard. Okay. Uh, furthermore, there are two main ways for, for black to play the Queen's Indian setup. One of them is with pawn to d5. One of them is with pawn to d6. Usually, d5 setups lead to two types of positions. One of them are hanging pawn, pawn positions. 
when black continues with c5 and trades in the center happen and then you have a position like this where black has hanging pawns which are dynamic positions and which you have to play carefully basically advancing any of the pawns forward is going to be tough and the second type of position is an iqp position where black has to play for the attack using the e4 square as an outpost you basically have to play actively so that's what happens in d5 setups. d6 setups, as I said in the previous video, tend to be a bit more positional. Uh, I would like to uh, mention a comment I got, which I agree with, that sometimes d6 setups are way more, more aggressive than d5 setups, because keeping the center closed gives you a freer hand on the king side with f5 and going for a king side attack. Okay, hedgehog positions are something that could happen from the Queen's Indian if you continue with c5 after d6, and this will help if you if it will help help if you know Sicilian positions. White will usually achieve e4 in these positions, and you will play a sort of hedgehog along, uh, against the Maroxi bind position. Also, there are b file. Uh, open b file positions where you have to play on the semi open b file sometimes you can play for d5 but it's much more solid to play d6 and solidify the e5 square and finally something i'm going to introduce today is a great problem in the queen's indian uh, old main line and in other variations but especially out of bishop b7 lines that very often the center is just going to get destroyed there will be no center and the pawn structure is going to be symmetrical so if you're playing let's say you are 2000 or you're, you're 1500 you are playing an opponent rated 1300 in a tournament you don't want this position this is going to be a draw i mean it's very hard to go wrong so some lines of the Queen's Indian can be very drawish. My advice, if you're playing a high rated opponent, fine, go for this. If you're playing a lower rated opponent, be very careful with central exchanges and make sure that you don't get this 4 on 4, 2 on 2 uh, position. Okay, now uh, let's get into the position. So starting from, from this position, uh, Black can choose between two different approaches. One of them is bishop b4 check, the Capablanca variation, and the other one is bishop to e7. Bishop e7 is the main line. It's the main line for a reason. It's a bit more sensible. Bishop b4 tries to play in a sort of Nimzo Indian fashion, or Bogo Indian fashion, I should say, trying to misplace one of the pieces or double the pawns. So basically, this bishop doesn't want to be on d2. It would much rather be on, on b2 after b3. This knight doesn't want to be on d2. It would it would like to be on c3 to control the light squares because the Queen's Indian is an opening based around light squares control for both sides. So the move bishop b4 makes some sense, but I think the bishop is very useful on e7 and you basically don't want to trade it off. So this is the Capablanca variation. Now there are two options for white. Knight b2 d2 is a sideline. After this, you can continue uh, with castles, and white should castle as well. And now you can either take the knight, play d5, uh, or yeah, just choose between those two options. Basically, this knight, since it's not, it's not pinned to the king, is already supporting e4. And if you're not careful, white will play queen c2 or rook e1 and, and play e4. Because e4 is something we are trying to prevent, taking the knight is sensible also directly stopping uh, e4 with d5 is also sensible however as soon as you play d5 in the queen's indian you are committed to the types of centers we talked about where either a exchanges are going to happen and these pawns are going to be traded off and the position will be symmetrical or you will have hanging pawns in the center or you will have an isolated queen's pawn more importantly you give up the e5 square to the white knight and that could be very annoying in fact after d5 white should immediately continue with knight e5 knight b to d7 queen a4 attacking the bishop bishop d6 and this position i believe is not so great for white after all these trades for black excuse me and especially because your winning chances are really non-existent you have to play c5 at some point once you play c5 you're going to have pawn weaknesses so if you play c6 to defend d5 then rook c1 is annoying so I, I don't like these positions if you play against knight b to d2 i would recommend simply taking that knight off immediately and after queen takes d2 playing d6 and after b3 knight b to d7 normal development bishop b2 queen e7 and playing for e5 
and playing for e5, maybe c5, but e5 more likely, and just trying to undermine the white position. What's also possible, and I've played this, is h6, knight h7, f5. There you have to be slightly careful, because e5 is going to be a bit weaker. Uh, and of course, always be careful about this tension on the diagonal. It's very likely that one side could, could blunder a piece. Okay, uh, but after bishop b4 check, knight bd2 is extremely rare. Uh, almost everybody plays bishop d2. And now you can take, you can retreat the bishop back, you can play d5, you can play knight a6, you could even play c5. Uh, I think taking is the most principled move. Bishop e7 is, well, bishop e7 is a sideline, and basically you're saying... I misplaced the bishop on, on, on d2, which I don't believe is true. I believe that, it, that it's still a tempo. So, okay, knight c3, castles, castles. And in this position, you either uh, continue with d5 or you continue with knight a6. The idea behind knight a6, and this is a pattern I would like to mention, is that often uh, your knight is going to end up on, on c5. And this is a, a pattern you have to know if the d pawn gets traded off. So if you manage to, for example, knight a6, and then they play rook c1, and you play c5, if they ever take, then you take with the knight. Also, uh, after something like d5, if they don't take, and e d5, uh, and for example, in this line, knight h4 is the most popular move, you can now continue with knight c7. So knight a6, knight c7 is the way to, to develop this knight. As I said at the beginning, it's very hard to develop this knight. Most people play d6, knight d7, and play for e5. But if you play for a kingside attack without e5, if you play f5, then the knight isn't really that useful. It's controlling c5, which is a break white would like to play. But other than that, it doesn't really do much. Now, in my early Queen's Indian games, I played rook e8, knight f8, knight g6, and then h4, h5, h4, which is an attacking idea you could go for. Also, you, you could try playing e5 and knight e6, which is very weird. I've never seen that in an actual game, but I've tried it. But the point is, it's very hard to develop this knight because you don't want to play knight e6, that allows d5. The knight will either go to d7 or to a6. Okay, um, so bishop d2, bishop d2 is the main defense. Bishop e7 is, as I said, a sideline. I would recommend simply taking on d2. And after queen takes d2, you can castle. White plays knight c3. And now you have to be careful. Uh, as soon as knight c3 is played, look for e4 for white. So for the moment it's defended against, fine, but he could very well prepare that uh, with queen c2 or castles rook e1. So as soon as knight c3 is played, it's very common in the queen's indian to play the move knight e4. Now, the move knight e4 is not an invitation to a draw, just saying, oh, I want to trade pieces, I'm afraid of e4. No, it's about going for a kingside attack and opening up lines. If you're familiar with the Dutch defense, this is a setup fairly fairly similar to the classical Dutch, in which as soon as you play f5 and have this bishop on the long diagonal, you, you can go for a very strong attack. It's, of course, most sensible to just take this, and white should castle to defend his bishop, and you can either continue with f5 here, or you can play d6. d6 is more sensible, preparing to, to develop your knight. Queen f4 is the main move. There, other moves can be played as well. And now f5. And even though there aren't too many attacking pieces and it may seem sort of boring, it's actually a very strong position for, for black. And I believe that it's much easier to play black. And this is a very thematic setup. So this would be a d6 position with f5, the, uh, one of the most thematic pawn structures in the Queen's Indian. So knight g5 attacks, attacks the bishop takes king takes and queen to e7. Uh, queen e7 is a pattern you have to remember because that prepares the move e5. And when the pieces get traded off and you have a pawn on f5, uh, then knight d7 e5 is a very common way to start your attack. You could even consider h6, g5 and then f4. It's, it's very straightforward and very brute, but that's how we play the Queen's Indian attacks. In this case, though, um, white plays for his thematic break, and that's d5. In most d6 positions, when black hasn't played d5 himself, white should play d5. Here it may seem strange to you that, black, that white allows e5, but there's a very concrete reason. Queen h4, and now h6, chase the knight away, defense h7. Uh, knight e6 is the reason. But this knight is very strong. 
but this center is very strong. And basically black has a better pawn structure, and if he is given enough time, uh, that for example rook f6, knight d7, knight f8, black in my opinion has an extremely pleasant position. c4 is never happening. You could close the position down with a5 and simply not allow any pawn breaks. At the same time, you have g5, you have f4, you can double your rooks on the f file, you can continue with simply f4 and try to try to win that way. Okay, so this was a brief overview of bishop b4, which I think is an inf inferior move to, to bishop to e7. In the Queen's Indian, if you want to win, you don't want to trade the pieces off, so don't trade the pieces off. The Queen's Indian is an attacking opening similar to the Dutch, so just play aggressively, don't, 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 don't give your bishop away. So, okay, we will have a look at bishop e7 now, which is the main move. Okay, so after bishop to, uh, bishop to e7, uh, there are two options. White could play knight c3 or castles. After knight c3, just remember that you play knight e4. It's almost always correct to play knight e4 when they play knight c3. You basically want to prevent e4 be before it's even possible to be played. So the options are either d5 or knight e4. Knight e4 is much more common and, and better. Okay, knight e4. And now we have this very thematic bishop to d2. Uh, this is one of the main 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 positions in this old main line and here uh, black gets to choose between several moves there are actually five moves here there is uh, bishop f6 there is f5 there is d5 there is not knight c3 and there are castles they all have similar ideas they basically all have similar ideas d5 and f5 have and knight takes c3 actually increase light squared control because you trade off this knight for this knight, uh, with knight takes c3, with f5 you increase the control over e4, with d5 you increase the control over e4, with bishop f6 you have a sort of different plan. You are switching for dark squared control and after bishop f6 you are going to continue with c5 and d5 and try to play in a sort of main line d4, c4 openings uh, with colors reversed. So bishop f6 is sort of against the nature of the queen's indian and it's only move that's is the only move that's sort of deviating from our common plans. So I'm just going to show it to you briefly. So after bishop f6, both sides shoot castle, and now after rook c1, you want to play c5, d5 as soon as possible. And if white doesn't know what he is doing, he will allow that. So white should play d5 himself. And now after e d5, c d5, uh, we can trade uh, this bishop off, knight takes d2, and we play d6. And this is the position I showed you earlier briefly where black is switching to dark squared control you can play g6 bishop g7 knight d7 uh, queen e7 rook e8 try to occupy the e5 square uh, white should of course continue with the move f4 try to control e5 and it's it's not not a normal queen's queen's indian anymore after something like g6 bishop g7 let's say a position like this this is much more like a benoni than the queen's indian much more like a Benoni than the Queen's Indian. So the nature of the position changes. So in this in this position, which is very thematic, if you want to play a Benoni type of structure, then Bishop F6 is for you. I would recommend the move F5, which is the most aggressive and keeping in line with our uh, Dutch slash Bogo Indian slash Nimzo Indian slash uh, Queen's Indian setup, and that's going for a kingside attack. We want to win, so F5. Now for white, you have to Remember that whenever f5 is played, whenever your opponent plays on the flank, it's correct to strike in the center. So players with black, whenever you play f5, be aware of the move d5. That, that's a move that's going to be played almost instantly by experienced players. Now, of course, if you could play e5, that would be great, uh, but you cannot. So you have to react, so you play bishop f6. And that makes it sort of harder to play knight takes uh, on, on e4 because uh, because f takes e4, the knight moves and then you take on b2. So queen c2, defending b2, attacking the knight, and now queen e7. Okay, rook to d1, uh, knight to a6. This is a very thematic position, so let's say castles. And here you could play knight d6, uh, you could play c6, you could play d6. You could even play for c5. I think knight d6 is most principal, just getting away from this from this attack on the pawn. And yeah, it's normal Queen's Indian position. Uh, I've castled queenside here, I've castled kingside. I believe that going for, for h6 
G5 is very sensible or G5, H5, H4. It's going to be a sharp position. Now, if you don't want to play a sharp game, then you can just castle, which is slightly safer. And he plays d5. Now you don't have to play f5. You could though. You could take on d2. They could take on d2. You could play bishop f6 and stuff like that. Okay, so that's knight c3. After bishop e7, though, the, the main, 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 main line is castles. And this is what you are going to have on the board in 95% positions after b6, after the queen's indian. So both sides castle, you know, knight c3. And again, remember what you do after knight c3, you play knight e4. You want to play knight e4, you want to play f5. Okay, there are several ways for, for white to play this position. He could play bishop d2, which is probably the main line. Well, which is the main line. Uh, he could play queen to c2, and he could take on e4. Knight e4 is extremely equal. After knight e4, bishop e4, knight e1, trading everything off, takes, takes, and d5. Uh, excuse me, knight takes is better. You can take with the queen, with the king, but knight takes is better. And on d5, something like queen a4, defending c4, d c4, queen c4, c5. This is an extremely even position. Now you can see the symmetrical pawn structure I was talking about. And on a very high level, this will end in a draw. So players with white, if you're facing the main line or the old main, main line of the queen's Indian, take on e4 go for the symmetrical pawn structure. If you want to make, make the position interesting, then queen c2 or bishop d2. Let's go over queen c2 first. Uh, after queen c2, you basically have to take on c3. Uh, you don't want double pawns. Uh, white played queen c2 to prevent double pawns and to attack e4, so takes. Queen takes and now c5, a very common pawn break. Uh, you can also play f5 and you can also play d6. So here is where you decide on the nature of the position. Again, c5 is the main line my personal preference is f5 again i just like going for this sort of dutch attack so b3 and bishop f6 this is where you put your bishop after f5 and now look at these two bishops this is a very pleasant position i just like these positions and now we continue d6 knight d7 try to play for e5 you play queen e7 very very normal plans again you don't have to play that you can play d6 and you can play c5 i'll just show you c5 briefly uh white should continue with rook to d1 and again you play for d6 b3 and now bishop f6 you don't really want to play c5 and f5 that in combination that would be really bad bishop to b2 queen e7 uh, queen to c2 and now knight to c6 is actually possible so c5 gives you different types of structures much more similar to the sicilian defense so if we imagine let's say more like like rook c1 and takes and knight takes and here okay so i lost the pawn no i didn't lose the pawn okay so something like this this would be a sort of normal hedgehog Sicilian structure after e4. This would in fact be a normal Maroxi bind versus Hedgehog with a weird combination of pieces traded off. Okay, but the but the main move after excuse me after knight e4 is actually to play bishop to d2. And after bishop to d2 bishop to d2 now we get to the to the fun part. Okay. So after bishop to d2, I'll try to keep this short and sensible. Okay, there are a couple of options here. You can play f5, bishop f6, d5, d6, knight takes d2, knight takes c3. You, you can do a ton of things. Now, uh, bishop f6 is going for the dark squared control. We already mentioned that. d5 will either lead to hanging pawns positions or to isolated queen's pawn positions or to positions where the center gets traded off and you have a symmetrical pawn structure. d6 keeps things, things flex, flexible. Knight takes d2 is passive. Knight takes c3 is passive, in my opinion. I'm going to recommend f5, and they'll stick to that. Okay, so after f5, uh, white has a couple of options. He could play rook c1, he could play queen c2. Uh, I'll show you queen c2 briefly. So queen c2 sort of delays the move d5. d5 is the main line, and we are going to be focusing on that. As soon as d5, if, as soon as you play knight uh, e4 and f5, and white doesn't play d5, your next moves are bishop f6, d6, knight d7, queen e7. What you do with your rooks will depend on, on what white does. Your rooks are sometimes good on the f-file, sometimes on the e-file, sometimes up here. But your next few moves, bishop f6, d6, knight d7, queen e7, are always good. Uh, 
Okay, rook d1, uh, knight takes c3 now, bishop takes c3, and bishop e4. And again, you have wonderful queens Indian bishops. Queen c2, not a problem, because eventually you can take on c3, you can gain this, this tempo on the queen. Experienced players with white are not going to play queen c2, they are going to play d5. And this is the most challenging line. Again, you will have a weakness on e6, that's inevitable. So white can at any point decide to trade here, but your bishop is now really good. So something like rook c1, getting the rook away from the diagonal, and now knight to a6, uh, a3, preventing knight before, and knight to c5. And this, this main position, this is what you reach from the main line of the Queen's Indian, is where I would like to stop and where I would like to invite you to, to study this. This is complicated, and neither side is really better, which is good. It's complicated because if you're playing somebody much stronger, it's good that it's complicated because if you're playing somebody much stronger, you have winning chances, they could go wrong. If you're playing somebody much weaker, then it's going to be complicated for them to play it, and you can you have attacking chances. It's definitely not symmetrical, definitely not boring. In my experience, Players with white don't really know what to do against quick attacks. So I'll show you what I did to win one game. So let's give white a move. I don't even remember what he played. I think... Hmm, I don't remember. Okay, I'll just show you instead of knight c5. So in one game, it wasn't exactly like this, but it was a very similar position. I continued with g5 and my opponent got really confused. So he reacted with h3. He didn't know what to do and then I just played g4. And now already this is very, very hard. So if you try taking here, this is what happened in our game. This happened. Okay, so I gave up a piece. So he took with, with something eventually, but I ended up mating him. So I, I don't remember the exact position. I think in the end I even played rook f3 just to block the queen, sort of Benko Fischer, if you remember the game of Fischer Benko. So very quick attacks can be achieved. Other than that, I mean, there are a ton of different plans. You can try to break the position open and win the d5 pawn. d5 is a strength and a weakness for white, but sometimes the pawn will hang. Sometimes you can, you can even manage to play the move e5, then solidify your pawn structure with d6 and then continue with f4. I mean, there are a million different plans. Study games from this position. There have been more than 60 games here. Vugar Gashimov was one of the most famous modern players who, who played uh, this position. E.F. Geller was a famous Soviet player who played this. So, I mean, you can find 60 Grandmaster games from this position. The most common move for white is b4, of course, and now you should continue with knight takes c3. Bishop takes c3 and now knight e4, and you're getting another knight to the center. Bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, and all your pieces are aimed towards an attack, which is why white starts trading queens off, tr trading, trying to trade pieces off. So a very rich position. Okay, so I hope you like this video. Uh, hope you found it useful. Again, you have two options after g3, bishop b7 or bishop a6, which I covered yesterday. I prefer bishop b7, but both are playable. Both are different. Uh, but the thing is, they, they all have thematic pawn structures. So I hope I, hope I managed to explain at least 1% of, of the bishop b7, queen's Indian. Let me know what you think. Uh, see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.